Good evening to everyone who have joined in this webinar. At the very outset, uh, I, Dr. Deepta Chakravarti, on behalf of the Department of Business Con Administration, would like to convey our greetings to Principal Sir, Dr. Bibhars Dev, uh, Vice Principal Madam, Dr. Gopashina Madam, IQC Coordinator Sir, Dr. Oprotim Nag Sir, Coordinator, Department of Business Administration, Dr. Shorbani Dutto Madam, uh, all the respected colleagues of the Department of Business Administration, and uh, the participants uh, of this webinar. So we also express our heartfelt greetings to Dr. Pradipto Das sir, who on a very short notice have accepted our invitation to share his wisdom with the participants uh, of this webinar. So the contribution of information technology in various fields has made this subject indispensable. Contribution of information technology uh, in the field of business uh, can be deciphered uh, by the way information technology fosters innovation. Innovation and creativity are tools by which a business can ensure that it does not go obsolete. You can say that creativity and innovation keeps the vigor and vitality of an economy alive. So considering the importance of information technology in the field of management, we, the teachers of the Department of Business Administration, uh, under the framework of the college authority and under the guidance of uh, coordinator, Madam, Dr. Shorbani Dotto of the Department of Business Administration, contemplated and envisaged to conduct this webinar. So as I have mentioned earlier, that uh, we are really grateful to Dr. Pradipto Das, sir, who have, uh, on a very short notice, uh, accepted our in invitation to share his wisdom with the participants uh, of this webinar. We could not have got a better uh, resource person than him. He is uh, serving as an associate professor in Department of Computer Science, Assam University. Uh, there have been many research scholars who have uh, uh, conducted their PhD under his supervision. He is uh, he holds the mem membership of International Association of Computer Science and Information Technology. So truly speaking, uh, it would be very difficult to package uh, the laurels and the uh, accolades earned by Sir in the narratives of few minutes. So thank you, Sir, for your generosity. So at the outset, I would now request our coordinator, Madam, Dr. Shorbani Dotto, to deliver her welcome address. Please, Madam. Good evening, everybody present here. Respected Principal Sir, JC College, Shinchar, Dr. Vivas Dev, respected IQVC coordinator, Dr. Aprotim Nath, and respected Sir, Dr. Pradipto Dash, Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science, Assam University, Shilchar, and today's guest for the webinar, my colleagues from the Department of Business Administration, and different, uh, uh, different colleagues uh, of other departments, and my dear students. Today, the Department of Business Administration, JC College Shilchar, uh, are here to conduct the webinar on artificial intelligence uh, and data science for industry 4.0. Uh, this is also the National Technology Day and this year's theme for the day is School to Startup, Ignite Young Minds to Innovate. This is a, a lecture, uh, in second in the series of lecture um, arranged by the Department of Bus Business Administration where the first one was of uh, industry academia relation, and this time it is an inter academia relations. Doing is to develop our student skill and make them fit for the both for both the job market, innovative field of production, HR management, and certainly for the budding entrepreneurial field together with skill formation. Without spoiling much time, I shall uh, stop myself here and we'll listen to our guest speaker to fulfill our purpose to address our target group that is our students. So I welcome you all present here. Webinar. Thank you very much, Madam. So now I would request uh, our coordinator, IQSC, 
uh, Sir Dr. Akhati uh, Mark, sir, uh, to share his wisdom and enlighten us uh, with few words. Please, sir. Thank you, Dr. Dipraj. At the outset, I would like to offer my heartfelt thanks to Dr. Pradeep Das, who is also an alumnus of our college, for responding to the invitation of the Department of Business Administration of our college for this lecture program at a, at a very short notice. Actually, our principal, sir, is uh, leaving for Guwahati uh, to the afternoon on an official visit. That's why he is not present in the inaugural session of the webinar. Sir has extended his best wishes for the success of this webinar. I'm thankful for the, to the Department of Business Administration because uh, they very frequently organize this type of lecture sessions. In fact, uh, in this uh, academic session, this is the second such lecture which has been organized. The first one was also delivered by one of our distinguished alumnus, Uttam Dev Chaudhary, who is the operations manager of India office of Honeywell India. And this uh, lecture by Dr. Pradeep Das is the second in the series. Actually, uh, Dr. Pradeep Das is a well-known face in the academic world of this region. And uh, I am uh, hopeful that uh, this lecture will be immensely benef beneficial for the students of the Department of Business Administration. And in fact, uh, you'll be glad to know, Dr. Das, that even our, uh, some of our alumni have also come to know of this lecture of yours. And they have even they have uh, sent WhatsApp message to me to send them the links for the YouTube links for the for your lecture. So even one of them is also a colleague of my wife in the Indian Department of Post in Government of India. So naturally, so the looking the students of the department as well as the alumni of our college are looking forward to hearing from you. This type of uh, lecture programs have uh, in, a number of benefits attached with it because on the one hand. It also it, uh, increases or enhances the knowledge base of the students. And apart from that, when such type of lectures are uh, delivered by our alumni, so the, it, uh, the, when uh, the deliberations are presented by alumni, the students also get an opportunity or they get a feel of what a student graduating from this college can achieve. So I hope that this lecture program will be able to deliver the purpose for which it has been organized. And I wish this program on behalf of the internal quality assurance cell of the college and the college in general, a grand success. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. So now the... Please uh, take over the proceedings and deliver his lecture. Please, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Deepraj. Am I audible? Yes, sir. <clears throat> so, respected principal, uh, Dr. Vivash Dev, uh, respected uh, vice principal uh, of DC College, Madam Sina. And Dr. Sharbani Datta, uh, coordinator of BBA program, Dr. Pratim Nag, uh, director uh, of IQS CDC College, and uh, all the faculty members of uh, the Department of Business Administration, uh, students of uh, Department of Business Administration, and all the participants who are connected today for this uh, lecture. Basically, uh, uh, this lecture is actually based on Industry 4.0. Uh, so uh, before uh, starting my lecture, I would like to say thanks to the organizer for inviting me uh, in this session. And uh, Sir Opratim Sir has already told that I am the alumni of uh, GC College, so it's my uh, honored to be invited in such a uh, webinar. So I'm uh, sharing my screen for uh, the lecture.
is it visible yes sir so uh, this is actually my brief uh, discussion on uh, uh, brief topic on uh, the screen is not yet visible your the screen that you have shared is not yet visible now is it visible not yet now it's okay sir not yet not yet not yet yeah now it is coming oh yeah yeah it is now visible okay okay now it's okay yeah it's okay okay so uh, my topic is uh, artificial intelligence and data science for industry 4 so basically uh, in uh, today if we see the business and other uh, industry uh, people are much talking about artificial intelligence artificial intelligence and data science become a buzzword now many people are talking uh, even uh, people are talking about the job on ai data science all those topics people also say that ki next uh, 50 years 30 years will be uh, the age of artificial intelligence data science only so this kind of comments we generally listen from different corners is it really true that artificial intelligence and data science will be the future of the industry for or any kind of business uh, establishment so let's have a look on this topic and what are the things which will be coming in the near future that we are uh, actually we will uh, see industry 4 basically this concept is actually a new concept which is uh, coined by uh, martin schwab in 2015 according to him the industry 4.0 or the fourth generation of industrial revolution which will be conceptualized based on the rapid change to technology industry and societal patterns and processes according to him uh, the industry will be very much influenced through the interconnectivity and the smart automation yes uh according to uh, martin schwab the world economic forum founder and ex executive chairman the things are not false it is very much true that everything starting from the home to industry each and everywhere there will be the impact of the smart automation here in the picture you can see industry 4.0 will include many small small devices networks components which will make the life easy which will make the industry operations processes easy profitable 
less time consuming. So starting from the technologies like sensor technology, drones technology, then uh, IoT, mobile smartphone technology, uh, power generation, agriculture, uh, smart industry automation, industrial operation, robotics, everything will be coming through this industry 4.0. The four industrial revolutions, if we see, whenever we are talking about the industry 4.0, we should at least have a look on the industry 1.0, industry 2.0, and industry 3.0. In industry 1.0, you can see here in the presentation, it's uh, basically the mechanization and the introduction of the steam and water power. Long back, you can remember when the steam engine and uh, steam uh, based uh, cars were introduced. So those were in the industry 1.0. In the second industrial revolution, the mass production assembly lines using electrical power. That means most of the industry operations were based on electrical equipments, mainly the electric motor. Then industry 3.0 which was automated production based on computers, IT system, and robotics. In Industry 3.0, we have seen uh, many different countries were using extensively the softwares. India, during the 90s decade and in the uh, uh, after 90s decade, uh, during 2005 to uh, up to 2010, you can say, where um, was the top country in the software field. And even in the USA, if you see most of the people uh, from India, actually they were working in the software industry to develop various industrial organizational softwares. So that was there in the 3.0. Then we are actually coming across or you can say the future which will be coming that is industry 4.0 which will be purely a smart factory autonomous system iot machine learning based system so these are though these are technical terms uh, many of you are from uh, most of you are from business administration so we are not going to the technical part of all those things but how business can be benefited from all those technologies that we'll discuss in today's uh, session. AI, I'm just giving you some uh, introdu introduction on various terms, then we will uh, show you some uh, examples and we'll go for uh, some uh, one or small videos, I will show you how AI and data science can change our life can change the business operation, business processes. So AI basically, artificial intelligence is a wide ranging branch of computer science concerned with building smart machines capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence. AI is mainly for the problem solving and decision making capabilities of the human mind. Yes, these two terms are very uh, important here. One is problem solving and another one is decision making. So in the uh, business or in any uh, commercial uh, operation, transaction, problem solving is very crucial. Decision making is very crucial. If you were starting a new company as entrepreneur, you should have these two skill. One is problem solving, second is decision making. Problem solving means suppose you have uh, a problem in front of you. Suppose uh, you need to uh, procure some equipment from a distant place which is not available in your city. So in that case, you have to contact a vendor from other city. You have to book the, uh, uh, you have to send the specification of the uh, equipments. Then you, you will pay the money as advance then they will ship the item 
uh, after uh, uh, shipping, shipment, uh, or transportation, you will get your item in your city. You will give the second uh, uh, portion of the second part of the payment, and this will actually will get this kind of thing. So your problem is actually to get the equipment. So you see in the whole process, if you uh, see the technology's involvement, sending the uh, proposal, sending the order to a company, actually you need a communication system. So communication system is basically based on uh, computer or uh, engineering uh, or technology based thing. Now, those communication systems are so well equipped that there are artificial intelligence. Earlier, there were many issues with the communication system. You might have experienced those uh, uh, problems or issues in the communication system. When first mobile system has come, uh, at that time, it was uh, totally uh, uh, problematic in the sense uh, call, uh, cross connection, uh, echo, uh, call dropping, all those things were there. But these kind of problems are not at all there or uh, some extent uh, problems are still there, but it is better than earlier. So this kind of technologies involvement in the process of communication, then order sending payment, for example. You are uh, sending money, that is also smart money. It is cashless transaction. You need not to send any cash. Through UPI, you can pay, uh, do the payment. You can send the send it through bank transfer. Many other options, NEFT, uh, many options are there nowadays. So uh, that is also technology. Then transportation, booking uh, a transport uh, transporter, for example, uh, delivery. You know uh, uh, that that is a transport company. Many uh, VRL is a transport company in India. So they have uh, the transport facilities across India. You can book the item from any city to another city. So that is uh, their services actually available online. So this kind of uh, whole operation actually you can see there are involvement of the technology and not only technology. Nowadays these are all uh, AI uh, related uh, AI touched technology. You can say uh, you cannot say it is fully AI, but uh, it is partially uh, AI system. They will come when all the services, ser mainly service sector will be converted to AI based system when uh, the things, uh, operation, transaction, everything will be uh, smoother than today. In decision making, decision making actually in business, it's uh, you know it, decision making, suppose there is a risk factor or there is a uh, challenge or uh, there is suppose one uh, issue there in the uh, organization. So how we will take that decision, how it will be a perfect decision, how we will, uh, you will not uh, lose too many because of that risk or because of that uh, problem. So your decision making system will be there in the organization which will guide you how to tackle the situation. So this kind of system, actually decision-making system or expert system, these are nothing but the AI system. Even do you know, nowadays in the hospitals, doctors also, they keep the decision uh, expert system along with them. If you go to uh, uh, big hospitals, you, you will find that uh, doctors are keeping computer. Whatever you are telling to doctor, doctor, they are actually, uh, taking, noting it down, each and everything. Sometimes they actually recording it in the expert system. And before coming to any conclusion on the uh, counseling of the patient, they actually first listen to the expert system. So expert system is nothing but the artificial intelligence based system, which is actually helping the doctor. So in one side, we are having men. In another side, we are having machine. So men, machine interaction. So a doctor and the expert system, uh, that is also virtual doctor, you can say. So both the doctors actually uh, doing the counseling of the patient and giving the 
Uh, any issue with the sound? No. Uh, so uh, these are actually uh, they are uh, through AI. If we uh, see the application of AI or use of AI in the business in any other field, uh, will be uh, actually uh, today uh, it's there. But the future in future actually you can see uh, there will be many other field where uh, AI will be used. You can see some of the points actually I have put in the presentation. The neural network, you know, neuron is nothing but the brain cell. So people are actually working on that neural network. Neural network actually basically uh, artificial uh, network of artificial neurons, uh, just like our uh, brain cell. Uh, artificial neuron is nothing but a, uh, you can say it's a program. So it's a program and uh, when we are talking about the neural network. Network is nothing but number of artificial neurons. So what is the main task of uh, function of uh, artificial neuron? Neuron actually, it can sense the input and it can improve the uh, output based on the error. Based on the error means uh, it is checking, calculating the error present in the uh, whole process and gradually, Artificial neural network actually it refines the output. Suppose first time the answer is 30, and uh, 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 the programmer is not happy with the answer 30. So next time, uh, and uh, for uh, calculation of uh, for calculating this 30, uh, if there is error, suppose uh, 0 0.005, uh, based on the error actually it is a, it is changing the output. The next time output is actually, uh, it's coming to suppose 31 or 32. Um, even then, uh, in the next cycle, output is coming 32 instead of 30. So this process will continue actually. Suppose still the programmer is not happy with 32. So again, it will run. So this way actually refinement of the output will go on and gradually it will touch up to 100 or near about 100. So nowadays, whatever machine learning techniques are there, most of the machine learning techniques actually, they perform near about 95 to 99%. Uh, if you consider the voice recognition, almost it is, uh, research work is almost done. Most of the uh, languages covered, most of the accent covers uh, already covered, uh, voice recognition is almost ready for uh, launching in different, uh, places, different softwares, uh, so voice recognition, then natural language processing. That research is also almost completed uh, in major languages. You can see uh, nowadays Google can translate in Bengali, in Tamil, Telugu, uh, in different Indian languages, even in Sanskrit. Recently in 2022, Sanskrit is also included in the WordNet project. So uh, Google can translate from English to Sanskrit, Sanskrit to English. So this type of uh, uh, translation is possible nowadays. So when natural language processing will be uh, completely done, then uh, net, this voice recognition, uh, speech recognition, natural language processing, and uh, then we are having computer vision, that means uh, image processing. Image processing is also uh, well, it is started long back and a lot of research work has been done uh, in image processing and image processing is very uh, systematic nowadays. If you go to a hospital, CT scan machine, MRI, these are all the outcome of the image processing research. And machine learning, machine learning, actually the research is still going on. Uh, research is not completed. Uh, people, many people uh, many research teams, groups are working throughout the world uh, for making it or giving it a complete shape. Deep learning. Machine learning actually started long back. Uh, let's say uh, 25 years back, machine learning started. And deep learning started uh, 
around 10 to 10 to 12 years back uh, deep learning and uh, deep learning actually it's uh, uh, more than machine learning you can say and uh, through deep learning actually uh, if we are following any operation or any kind of processing computation deep learning gives us maximum accuracy which is uh, if we compare with the machine learning uh, deep learning is better than machine learning then cognitive com computing uh, cognition different cognitive science cognitive uh, uh, systems were developed uh, then natural language processing so already i have told so these are they are in ai actually all these subjects uh, research topics are included in data science data science is basically another subject uh, or uh, which is actually the uh, combination of many small uh, many uh, different subjects like mathematics is uh, uh, mathematics uh, is there statistics is there artificial intelligence computer science so different subjects actually it is there it is a multidisciplinary approach and data science basically uh, starts with the data analytics that means analysis of the data you can see here uh, different data science components are like uh, statistics so yes basically it is started with statistics uh, when uh, one or two data will be there you can easily handle it but when we you will have more than uh, uh, finite number of data then it will be difficult to handle so in that case you should have a better system for that one so uh, data mining is there data mining actually when there are huge data uh, large volume of data then data mining need to be uh, there data mining actually it mines from the de data when suppose uh, there is a table with uh, student name student roll number some score these that you can easily find the name of the student out of that table but if there are uh, more than that table if there are a very huge uh, table containing different uh, types of data like uh, if we uh, consider the all other information other card information of the citizens of india can you imagine now almost 1.4 billion populations are there so uh, all the people they do not have other uh, but suppose if we consider 1 billion people uh, they have other card and if we are keeping it in a, a single database can you search a single data out of it without any uh, hassle? Uh, so at that time, actually, you need some data mining technique. Data mining, basically, it will mine. Mine money, it will uh, find out the exact uh, data from there um, based on your criteria. You will give some searching criteria. Uh, in Google, you might have seen whenever we uh, give some searching keyword, uh, searching string, Actually, it breaks into uh, breaks the whole sentence into number of keywords. Suppose I am searching uh, good hotels in Silchar City. So it is actually breaking the uh, whole string into number of keywords. One is uh, Silchar, Silchar City, Silchar or Silchar City. That will be very much prominent keyword for the searching. And second is the good hotel. When a hotel is one keyword, but good hotel is a different thing when a good is another adjective of the hotel so good is one keyword hotel is one keyword silchar is one keyword city is another another keyword so these four keywords will be basically considered for searching so using the uh, searching criteria it will search from the database and whatever possible result google actually finds it shows in a uh, in the uh, searching page so that is actually uh, basically uh, one type of uh, data mining so if we are having a large volume of data it's called big data it, it is again a, uh, a buzzword big data big data analytics uh, many people uh, say this kind of words big data so when we are having a big data then data mining will be required then uh, database database actually long back it is started dbms data processing uh, uh, it is started not less than 50 years ago uh, dbms actually introduced long long back uh, 
uh, nowadays we are having excel sheet and all those type of thing before that also we had uh, uh, data analysis uh, um, sheet uh, um, worksheets different types of worksheets were so there visualization visualization is also there in the data science visualization mane data you can see here in the animation uh, we are actually feeding some data and based on all the data actually it is showing different line graph bar graph then we are having this speedometer like uh, uh, diagram uh, so this kind of visualization is very important because you know uh, uh, if you see a table with uh, different numerical data it's uh, not so it will not be very much I mean, it will have less impact than uh, if you uh, see some um, chart or figures diagrams based on the data because color structure actually it uh, ha will have more impact in our brain actually, we uh, uh, we can recognize those things very easily faster we can memorize those thing for longer time that's why visualization is important so simply data or in the raw form of the data if you get anything it will not be uh, it will not have so much impact but yes visualization if it is there then the impact will be there pattern recognition pattern recognition basically it is also a part of the data science pattern recognition pattern mane the type suppose uh, yesterday uh, there were very uh, high temperature in our city uh, around the 39 to 40 in between 39 to 40 so pattern recognition basically uh, suppose we are feeding the data of uh, temperatures day temperatures of last one month to computer based on the one month temperature data suppose the computer is doing some simulation and finding out the next 15 days temperature this kind of uh, apps are there uh, uh, in google yahoo weather many different uh, uh, weather stations are connected online uh, through which we get the uh, weather forecasting so weather forecasting basically uh, it is based on the previous data so that's why you will see forecasting sometimes do not match uh, suppose tomorrow it's showing rainy day but tomorrow uh, there is no rain so because it's a forecasting forecasting may be true or may not be true mane <clears throat> that means whatever uh, predictions are there prediction uh, can be 100 mane cannot be 100% uh, 100% true sometimes it will be true uh, and it it is based on basically the previous data which you are feeding to the computer <coughs> so forecasting and prediction actually it's nothing but the pattern uh, it's actually under the pattern recognition so computer uh, has that ability to find out the pattern out of the data we are feeding it so that's why pattern recognition is a part and it is very important for uh, different business machine learning machine learning already we have uh, discussed in the last slide neuro computing neuro computing also we have discussed neuro computing means neural network so new neural network there are different types of neural networks uh, uh, even uh, the new new ai based tools actually they are coming based on the neural network only uh, you have seen the that movie rajanikanth that uh, robot uh, chitti uh, chitti is actually uh, designed through the neural network uh, so uh, it actually uh, it has actually mapped the human brain that's why it is so fast uh, 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 sophia uh, many of you have heard about sophia the first uh, human like robot actually uh, sophia actually it is designed by uh, one american company but it is owned by the saudi arabia arabia uh, the first uh, digital citizen of the world sophia uh, visits many different countries sophia uh, can talk so sophia can sense many thing uh, but these are all based on some previous data not like uh, sophia is uh, manipulating or uh, generating some new data no uh, yes there are 
মানে সাপোজ বেসড অন দা প্রিভিয়াস ডেটা ইট ইজ ডুইং লট অফ কম্পিউটেশন লট অফ অপারেশন ইট ইজ ডুইং বেসড অন দা প্রিভিয়াস ডেটা এন্ড ইট ইজ কামিং টু সাম কনক্লুশন দ্যাট মে বি পসিবল বাট ইট ইজ নট জেনারেটিং নিউ ডেটা অ্যান্ড another thing uh, this kind of actually robot uh, basically uh, they are based on the facts uh, facts are suppose today there is a robot uh, in 2023 that robot may be uh, may be following some database which is up to 2022 uh, so whatever incident happening in 2023 that robot will not know so these are actually the uh, many different components of data science now this is very important for you people because uh, this platform is a uh, business administration uh, platform and uh, this particular slide is very important for you people uh, so uh, we'll uh, go one by one the first point uh, the whenever we are talking about the impacts of data science on business first point is that it reduces the inefficiency yes in the business actually inefficiency is very uh, uh tough thing to uh, deal with because efficiency means the uh, suppose one employee is uh, efficient efficient means what efficient means it can think it can do any type of work it can uh, manage the thing so that is actually efficiency inefficiency means suppose one employee is unable to handle the situation unable to solve the problem unable to address the uh, situation unable to address the customer's uh, need so that is the inefficiency so for that actually we should have some mechanism or some device or computer which can take the smart decisions so making smarter decisions actually it is coming under this point and through which we can make any system uh, efficient second point is predicts trends and customer behavior yes that is very crucial in the business because you see uh, uh, which customer wants what type of thing uh, and uh, customer's requirement is actually based on price quality and many other factors so customers behavior study behavioral study is actually it's very tough uh when what type of item actually customers uh they uh, need and what type of items they like so liking unliking this kind of uh, survey actually it is very tedious job and earlier people used to do it manually but nowadays people are doing it uh through computer or it is uh, doing uh, people are doing it through technology so technology based uh, uh if we doing some if we are doing some survey on uh customers behavior customers trend customers prediction uh, suppose uh, one company is launching uh, a mobile phone smartphone uh, and company is projecting suppose 2 billion uh profit on that particular smartphone so for that to it should have a prior market survey is not it if market survey is not done properly then <clears throat> no company can launch the device no company can predict that there will be 2 billion profit after launching so market survey actually it needs many different uh things like uh, customer survey market survey suppose in silchar silchar population is suppo- uh, supposed 10 10 lakh 10 lakh people are there in silchar uh, 10 lakh people can buy maximum 20 lakh mobile phones not more than that is not it so mane this type of thing mane uh, so there is actually some intelligence required for taking such decision so if a mobile company is starting here uh, their production unit is starting here at silchar thinking that each and every customer will buy mobile smartphone from them and they are producing uh, 10 lakhs of or 20 lakhs of mobile uh, phones smartphones so that will not work because there are different shops there are different brands people will not follow on uh, people will not 
uh, buy smartphone only from them. So <clears throat> keeping that in mind, uh, during market survey, actually, the entrepreneur, the company, the uh, decision maker of the company, they will sit and they will finalize uh, based on the market survey that what type of uh, or what is what will be the quantity uh, uh, for production, how much they will produce so that there will be uh, um, uh, less chance of risk, there is less chance of loss. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, their inventory also should be cleared on time. Otherwise, electronics items, suppose smartphone is produced at their production unit and it is kept for three years in the production site. So automatically the mo mobile phone will be of no use because mobile phone electronic devices, as you know, if the manufacturing year is 2019, you will not purchase it because uh, a mobile phone or any electronic item, if it is produced in 2019 and now it is 2023. So in these four years, uh, the uh, and uh, moreover, each and every electronics device, they have the lifespan, a life. Suppose any electronic device maximum it lasts for seven to eight years, not more than that. And if you are uh, using it very uh, rigorously or your usage is very high, uh, in that case, it will not last for two, two to three years. So keeping that in mind, the company will fix the number of units to be produced. So that require a very uh, crucial decision making. So for that, actually, if uh, five of uh, the business advisors or decisions makers, they sit together, there may be difference of opinion. There may be uh, there may be some points which they are unable to think. So in that case, they can take the help of some expert system, uh, computer system, through which they will actually think that, or they will feed some data to the expert system. An expert system will, in return, predict that the total number of smartphones to be produced will be suppose one lakh or two lakhs. Uh, 20 lakhs will not be there because 20 lakhs will not, can, they cannot uh, sell it uh, in a Silchar like city. In that case, they should have some network like uh, they should have uh, networks of uh, sending the items to different cities. They should have the outlets or the collaboration with the outlets. They should have the collaboration with the online portals, shopping portals like Amazon and all other things must be connected to them so that their products are actually also sold in those uh, online portals. So that point is very crucial. The third point is enables competitor research. Yes, uh, competitor research is actually very important. Uh, suppose uh, automobile company, they actually always they take their research like how many pieces of the car sold by the other companies. That point is very crucial. Suppose in this season, uh, which company actually has got maximum uh, number? Uh, so that is actually their uh, main uh, uh, parameter for uh, this kind of research. And then they start thinking that for what reason that particular automobile company has got maximum customer during this season. They find, try to find out uh, that particular point. If it is quantity based, if it is quality based, they actually focus on those uh, points during the next production. Suppose uh, you can see in the market, nowadays, most of the people, they purchase SUV, uh, sports utility vehicle, SUV type car uh, for personal use. Uh, sometimes where there, people used to depend on Maruti 800, but now Maruti 800 is no more. They are, uh, their uh, next version is also, uh, it's there, Alto 800, but it's uh, uh, market demand is very less. People are not using it. But if you go to higher version, suppose Beleno, uh, Nexa Beleno, um, then EcoSport. So this kind of car actually, Nexon, Tata Nexon, this kind of product, 
they are actually now in the booming stage. Uh, people are actually directly from money purchasing without any thinking uh, because uh, money customer to customer there is some com competition. Uh, suppose uh, there is one neighbor he has purchased a bolero. So next time when I will purchase, I will go for Scorpio higher than my neighbor. So this kind of competitions are there in the market. So when they do this kind of research work, actually a lot of uh, points they should consider. And their ultimate goal actually every time remains the uh, improvement of the profit. Uh, Operation research, one paper is there in mathematics, in statistics, even uh, in your business administration also, it is there through which actually, uh, that, that is basically a numerical problem. That numerical problem actually solves how to increase the profit, how to reduce the costing. How to reduce the costing, how to increase the uh, profit, how to increase the quality. So this kind of, uh, uh, numerical problems are there in operation research. So operation research actually, if you are doing manually in pen and paper, it takes uh, three, four pages, five pages, sometimes more than that also. This kind of operation, if you are doing it in computer and if you were fitting it, uh, when you are making a program or software, then that will not take much time. You will give some uh, input essential input and you will get the answer what type of strategy you will follow for the next uh, production or uh, what will be the marketing strategy for uh, your company that can be fixed through those uh, uh, those softwares fourth point is allows testing of business initiative yes <clears throat> data science actually uh, it allows uh, business initiative money uh, Testing, any kind of testing actually, uh, suppose market uh, before launching a product actually, they launch demo version. Uh, uh, so through demo actually they will test many things. Uh, so there are also data science, data science how, suppose uh, 100 demo versions they have launched. Suppose one automobile company uh, launched 100 demo versions and uh, through those demo versions, actually, they have uh, collected some customers report from uh, market and based on the customer's feedback, they are uh, doing some uh, analysis and uh, they are uh, fixing, the, they, they are actually deciding on that key whether they will uh, launch the uh, particular vehicle or not. So these, these are actually there that can be done through data science and AI. Then we have the de uh, develops market understanding. We have already discussed about that. Helps interpret complex data. Yes, complex data also can be uh, uh, studied, inter uh, interpretation can be done. Helps in manpower management. Yes, manpower management, uh, recruitment and of employees, all these uh, things can be done through AI and data science. So uh, one decision making example, actually, I'll uh, show you now. Uh, the, uh, Dr. Dibraj. Hello. Madam. Any participants? Uh, decision making example, use of data science. Uh, suppose one task is there, how to build a team to deliver business results across the globe. Uh, so <clears throat> one uh, case study like thing, as a leader in Silicon Valley Corporation, I was asked to build a team that would be able to standardize our IT outsourcing processes and implement strategic organization change across 
the world a workforce of 20000 people scattered across the globe in our global uh, delivery centers so i took uh, a long look at the problem i have two choices what are the choices number one build a team in your location and then travel across the world for implementing the changes that is option number one choice number one option number two is build a team across the globe who can implement changes locally so i choose uh, choice b and interviewed and hired the best people i could find from different places suppose from usa costa rica bulgaria slovakia india malaysia philippines and even australia so different locations are covered different continents are covered for that so what was the outcome of the decision because the team of 20 people was uh, spread across the globe i had to work from remote place remote team management best practices like skype team meeting regular one to one coaching sessions and organizing a yearly face to face meeting team meeting and that particular thing actually helped uh, the company to earn uh, uh, a profit of 100 million at the end of the year and uh, according to that uh, case study many of the team members i consider my friends even to this day so uh, that means in this decision making example suppose one task is given by your boss if you are working in a corporate sector or private sector company your boss has given you some task he, uh, you have to lead a team of 20000 people uh, across the globe or suppose uh, you have to serve 20000 people they are the customer suppose customer number you have to recruit uh, and uh, those 20 number uh, 20000 customers are actually scattered in the globe everywhere when I, from africa from america europe uh, from asian south asian countries uh, there are customers so what you will do is you have to recruit many uh, different people so for recruitment you need some technology like here in the uh, case study it is mentioned skype team meeting that means skype is a video calling facility you know nowadays we are having whatsapp video calling facility we can connect through uh, different social media also social media platform they have uh, this uh, calling facility video call voice call facilities are there nowadays so through uh, those uh, technology means actually we can connect to different people even interview also can be conducted from remote places there is no issue uh, you can recruit people in different places and you can communicate with the uh, with your uh, machine your devices um, remote uh, desktop uh, you can access you can uh, have uh, meeting combined meeting uh, you can have the video call uh, just like uh, um, this one uh, uh, steam yard uh, so the, many different technologies are there existing and in, uh, which are coming uh, in the near future which will make the life very easy so the task how to build a team to deliver business result across the globe so that is not a problem nowadays so in the business uh, suppose this kind of scenario comes then it is not a problem you can uh, easily uh, take a breath and you can um, easily solve this problem with within minutes uh, through the use of technology impact of artificial intelligence on business uh, we have discussed many topics on artificial intelligence and data science uh, some more topics are they are like make your backend organization more efficient with ai yes thinking um, uh, reasoning logic applying different types of logic so for that actually you can have uh, advanced AI system, which will deal with the different customers, different products, and uh, um, different services. Use AI to improve services. Yes, improvement will be there. Build an AI-powered marketing platform. Yes, 
uh, not only the production, but for marketing also, we'll have uh, AI system, AI. Uh... Now, uh, for example, uh, two examples are there, you see. Harley Davidson, a well-known motorcycle company, you know it, uh, it very well. In Silchar, we have uh, that bullet company, no? Uh, so Harley Davidson, a well-known motorcycle company, has reduced the assembly time from 21 days to six hours using the intelligent system. You can uh, uh, you can see who, how uh, they have reduced their time. Earlier, they used to take 21 days to assemble a motorcycle, and now they are taking only six hours to assemble because of the robot use of the robots in the manufacturing unit. In addition, tech giant Samsung report says it plans to ultimately convert one of its factories to AI-powered production in 2023. That means Samsung also has planned. Not only Samsung, many different companies, they are actually uh, trying to make fully AI-powered production unit uh, for production and marketing everything. Uh, you uh, might be surprised. Uh, or many of you know it uh, already. Uh, in uh, Metro City, if you go, you will find Uber, Ola, these kind of companies. They are actually operating uh, vehicles uh, for uh, local transport. If you were, uh, if you want to move from one place to another, uh, you you will book them through uh, their air. Uber or Ola, these kind of services are there. Do you know that Uber actually it's a software company? Uber is a software company and they have made their system so system uh, uh, simplified way, user friendly. <coughs> uh, so Uber has made a software where different drivers can connect, different customers can connect. And that is very much error free. Suppose one customer actually it's tied with a card or clubbed together with a card until and unless his, his or her journey uh, complete, uh, that when a bonding will not be uh, broken. When the payment will be there, then this uh, when a customer card, uh, that bonding will be actually broken and the card will be free for uh, picking up the next order. Uh, or uh, next uh, customer's uh, requirement. When a car is actually booked or in the running condition with a uh, passenger, at that time, that particular car cannot uh, receive any uh, customer call, any other customer's call. So this type of system actually, it is, uh, though it is uh, designed long back, but nowadays, uh, those systems are actually based on uh, little bit of AI techniques because uh, number of users are uh, too many. Uh, if you see the uh, backbone software structure of the Uber, Uber is actually operating in more than um, 80, 90 countries, uh, including India and in different countries. They are uh, when different types of vehicles are connected to that uh, small, medium size, even in some places, uh, uh, Uber uh, auto rickshaw services are there, two wheeler services are there in some places. So, at a point of time, if you see the total number of customers logged in in the Uber software, in the main Uber software, that will not be less than few millions. So, how they are managing all the customers' requests, response, uh, everything. Uh, they, that means they are having very wide, very good uh, server uh, uh, network system and they are having uh, ser good server, sub-servers are there in different countries and uh, coordination system is also very good uh, through that they are actually managing. So this kind of system need AI, otherwise without AI actually they cannot manage all the customers uh, so systematically and so accurately. Now we are coming to the chat GPT. Very uh, 
new word and lot of new uh, news are coming these days about this chat gpt chat gpt basically it is the ai system as i have told uh, sophia and all those all types of robots uh, were there so different types of robots are there mechanical robot uh, some uh, bots are there actually software bots are there some chat uh, bots are there different types of uh, robotic applications are there uh, nowadays uh, in the uh, market uh, in uh, many uh, website you might have seen uh, at the time of login you must check that i am not robot that means uh, there are robots uh, chat bots available uh, even hackers attacker they are actually using this kind of tools for attacking some website uh, for leaking the information uh, uh, for breaking the authenticity um, all those things so uh, chat gpt gpt is actually generative pre-trained transformer chat gpt is ai system ai chatbot developed by openai in openai actually many people are involved many companies are involved so the main company is actually the tesla uh, the person behind that you know him very well uh, elon musk very famous name uh, elon musk actually who is actually the uh, main person behind this chat gpt uh, and many other people are also involved like uh, facebook one uh, that uh, uh, meta is also there many uh, other investors are there uh, Google was also there uh, in their team, but now Google actually they are starting their own uh, um, chatbot for their services. Google has already Google Assistant is there. Uh, hello Google, you know that uh, type of term. Uh, so this kind of ad advertisement you have heard. Uh, in Google, uh, voice system is very uh, appropriate nowadays through uh, voice. Uh, uh, searching you can search anything so chat gpt basically a chat uh, uh, chatbot which is actually launched in november 30 2022 uh, it is built on the open ai's gpt platform 3.5 and 4 foundational uh, large language model llm and has been fine tuned and it has used uh, mainly the supervised and reinforcement learning techniques chat gpt and uh, uh, it has actually uh, some uh, drawbacks are also there. What are the, what is the main drawbacks of Chat GPT? Like uh, it pro provides some factually incorrect responses. Yes, as I have told you. Suppose Chat GPT has uh, it is actually launched in 2022. So up to 30th November or before that, it has uh, got all the information. Whatever data it has uh, inside the um, OpenAI's main uh, structure or chat gpt is main uh, core you can say uh, it is uh, up to 30th november so the information the fact which is uh, there after 30th november 22 uh, that chat gpt cannot cover that because chat gpt do not know that information so that is actually uh, factually incorrect responses uh, will be there suppose if you are searching the ipl score uh, in chat gpt IPL score of 2023, that IPL score cannot be uh, generated through ChatGPT. So uh, that is a drawback. And uh, ChatGPT actually has uh, already has an estimation of uh, 29 billion uh, market uh, in the in US dollar. And uh, we we are uh, we will actually see some uh, more ch uh, uh, ChatGPT like. Uh, Chatbots, Google's Bard and Meta's Lama. Meta Mane is Facebook people. Mark Zuckerberg actually, they are actually launching this uh, Lama. And Google's Bard, that means our Sundar Pichai is uh, 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 from the brain of the Sundar Pichai, this Bard is coming. So these are actually uh, yet to be launched fully. Uh, so it will be launched uh, very soon. So use of Jet GPT. Chat GPT, uh, in some recent news, I have seen in newspaper that Chat GPT has uh, given uh, uh, MBA exam. And, uh, 
just like human being chat gpt uh, has actually said appeared one examination on uh, mba uh, man management uh, business management course and it has got uh, uh, grade 2 that means second grade uh, so with that actually and when these kind of news are coming uh, almost uh, very frequently uh, people are thinking that uh, uh, how the things will be uh, people will be uh, if uh, uh, chat gpt like app actually can give mba exam and getting the uh, b grade uh, then to uh, one student can uh, bring a chat gpt like app and can uh, take help of chat gpt during the examination and write all the correct answers from chat gpt yes that uh, possibility is there uh, i will show you one video where uh, the uh, elon musk also is actually telling that okay, yes there is a risk let's see that video then it will a uh, very short video is there dipraj uh, time is there some more time so one, one video uh, you can see here before that i have to share my screen you can see this video and you have a mortal decade for which we can never escape you know, it's quite dangerous technology. Right? I fear I may have done some things to accelerate it. You know, I, I played a significant role in the creation of uh, OpenAI. Um, essentially, at the time, I was concerned that Google uh, was not uh, paying enough attention to AI safety. And so I, I, I created OpenAI. And although initially it was created as an open source nonprofit, now it is closed source and for profit. The average person, they don't see killer robots going down the streets. They're like, what are you talking about? Man, we want to make sure that we don't have killer robots going down the street. Once they're going down the street, it is too late. Do you feel that one day mankind could surf the machines and not the other way around? Honestly, when I see people on their phones, I think we're already serving the machine. Enough. Humans have been the smartest creature on Earth for a long time, and that is going to change with uh, what's typically called artificial general intelligence. Uh, so this is, say, an AI that is uh, smarter than a human in every way. Predicting 2025, I think that's uh, reasonably accurate. It will cause damage or death. There will be an outcry. There will be an investigation. Years will pass. There will be some sort of insight committee. There will be rulemaking, then there will be oversight, eventually regulations. This all takes many years. The way in which a regulation is put in place is slow and linear, right? And we are facing an exponential threat. If you uh, if you have a linear response to an ex exponential threat, it's quite likely the exponential threat will win. AI would be used to make incredibly effective propaganda. Hones the message, hones the message, check, looks at the feed, looks at the feedback, makes this message slightly better. Within milliseconds, it can, it can um, adapt its message and, and shift and react to news. And, and there's so many uh, social media accounts out there that are not people. Like, how do, you, how do you know it's a person, not a person? Because the AI has been advanced for a while. It just didn't have a user interface that was um, accessible to most people. Um, so what really ChatGPT has done is just put an an accessible user interface on AI technology that has been present for a few years. I think digital superintelligence will happen in my lifetime, one hundred percent. So. Uh...
This is one video, then uh, is it visible? So use of chat GPT. Uh, so uh, in your business, actually, you can use chat GPT, which will actually save time. That is the main uh, thing. Suppose you want to draft a letter. You want to draft a letter. So uh, that drafting needs uh, time. That will actually uh, a brainstorming session. Suppose you are writing a very crucial, important letter, email. So ChatGPT will easily make the draft for you. So that will save your time, save your stress, as will save you, uh, your stress, strain. It will be helpful for new ideas. Yes, ChatGPT will give you some new ideas. One news I have uh, uh, seen in the newspaper that ChatGPT is uh, in USA one, in one school, uh, 1,000 students uh, were using the same chat GPT for their uh, answers, writing answers. Same question were answered 1,000 different uh, types. One question, but uh, similar answer will not be there. In Google, generally, uh, that problem is there. Suppose one class, they are following the Google for answering. So same answer should be there in all the uh, answer sheet is not it. If there are 100 students, 100 students will write the same definition of a particular thing if they are taking the definition it from Google. But chat GPT, do you know the uh, wonderful thing is that in chat GPT, suppose 1000 students are uh, following the same chat GPT for same question, but chat GPT is giving a uh, different answer for all the students. So that is a very revolutionary uh, invention uh, through ChatGPT. Then one-stop manager. Yes, uh, ChatGPT can be uh, can be uh, can act as a manager in your company site in your business. Multiple language enabled. Yes, that is very much possible as uh, in our initial uh, before that I have actually discussed about that. Almost all the languages are. Uh, major languages are covered through uh, WordNet project. In India, uh, all the national languages are al already covered. Now, regional small, small languages are uh, yet to be connected. Suppose Mijo, Naga, Kasi, these are small uh, languages. They are yet to be connected, but their research is also going on. Nepali uh, WordNet uh, is uh, in the final stage next year or uh, so it will be uh, there in the uh, Google Converter. So many different languages are actually, in, uh, it's available in uh, Google Translator, uh, a long list. Uh, you can see what are the languages available nowadays. So these are already done. This type of research work already done. And uh, uh, ChatGPT will get those WordNet uh, uh, corpus, uh, uh, word corpus for uh, translation. So multiple language enable uh, facility will be there. Computational and technical abilities. Yes, computational technical, that means a uh, lot of uh, uh, reasoning, lot of logical decision, lot of calculation, it can do it uh, all together. Remembers previous information, yes. Human mind actually, we sometimes uh, forget, forget fullness, uh, fullness actually it is, uh, uh, with respect to age actually, uh, people used to forget many things. Um, Alzheimer uh, problem is there um, in many uh, cases. So chat GPT will have, will have no such difficulty. PBS information will be as it is there. Declines inappropriate request. Yes, if uh, one customer is uh, uh, requesting some irrelevant thing, so chat GPT can reply uh, very nicely. So. Other than this AI and data science, we are having some more uh, revolutionary technologies with us 
like internet of thing internet of everything earlier in iot was there and uh, after that internet of everything has come now each and everything can be connected through uh, uh through uh, technology uh, you might have heard about the alexa alexa is actually uh, one uh, uh, voice based uh, robot alexa can do many different things for you people nowadays alexa can be connected to fridge refrigerator uh, air conditioner even tv suppose you want to see uh, channel uh, sony channel for some uh, news or something some uh, program uh, so you will just say alexa hi alexa i want to see uh, that particular channel so alexa will actually make that arrangement for you alexa suppose uh, you are sleeping your air conditioner need to be stopped at uh, 12 o'clock uh, when room will be cooled so uh, before sleeping you can uh, instruct the alexa alexa you put off the air conditioner at 12 o'clock when the temperature will be uh, 18 or 20 like that uh, you just give the instruction before sleeping alexa will do the work for you so this kind of uh, technologies are coming so those technologies uh, will be mainly used in the business sector sensor network and cloud uh, computing these are also uh, another two very important part of uh, uh, new generation emerging technologies which can be uh, the future of our uh, business and uh, trade markets everywhere we can see those technologies uh, sensors will be there uh, nowadays drone technologies are also coming cloud services are also there um we can easily uh, store large quantity of data in the cloud uh, without any uh, problem with the many hassle hassle free services are available so uh, with that actually i will conclude here uh, before that actually i will show you one more video uh, to you people uh, before concluding another 5 uh, minutes we are having uh i will attend some question if possible i don't know uh, can see this video how ai can be uh, affect the business let me share the screen how ai can be has been making headlines in recent years as it increasingly becomes integrated into various industries according to a recent report 45% of online marketers are investing more in youtube over this year more than any other marketing channel available to them you see ai is no longer just a distant dream or a science fiction fantasy it is a reality that is already transforming the way businesses operate and creating new opportunities for growth and innovation but ai isn't just limited to the world of marketing it is also being used in customer service supply chain management and many other areas to automate tasks and make businesses more efficient in this video we'll be exploring the opportunities and challenges that ai presents for businesses as it continues to grow in importance and influence allow me to paint a picture of this exciting future for you Imagine a world where businesses are able to automate mundane tasks and make their operations more efficient through the use of AI. Customer service inquiries are handled by AI-powered chatbots, which are able to understand customer queries and provide personalized responses in real time. This not only saves time and resources for businesses, but also improves the customer experience by providing faster and more convenient service. Marketing campaigns are also being transformed by AI. By analyzing data on customer behavior and preferences, businesses can create personalized and targeted campaigns that are more likely to be effective. This could involve recommending products or services based on past purchases or showing ads to customers who are most likely to be interested in a particular product or service. In the supply chain, AI is being used to optimize logistics and predict demand. 
leading to cost savings and improved efficiency. For example, AI can analyze past sales and customer demand data to forecast future demand and adjust production accordingly. This can help businesses to avoid overstocking or understocking and to identify opportunities for cost savings. Another way that AI can help businesses is through predictive maintenance. In manufacturing and other industries, AI can analyze data from equipment to predict when it is likely to fail, allowing businesses to schedule proactive maintenance and avoid costly downtime. AI can also be used to detect fraudulent activity by analyzing large amounts of data and identifying patterns that may indicate fraudulent activity. This can help businesses prevent financial losses and protect their customers. In the realm of HR, AI can streamline processes such as resume screening and employee onboarding and help businesses identify and develop top talent by analyzing employee data and identifying patterns of success. In the healthcare industry, AI can be used to analyze patient data and identify personalized treatment options, leading to improved patient outcomes. But as promising as these developments are, this future is not without its challenges. As businesses adopt AI, they must also consider the impact on their employees and customers. Will there be job displacement or will employees be able to adapt and learn new skills? How will businesses ensure that the use of AI is ethical and responsible and that it serves the best interests of all stakeholders? These are essential questions that businesses must consider as they navigate the exciting yet uncertain future of AI in business. One of the main challenges that businesses will need to overcome as they adopt AI is the potential for job displacement. While AI has the potential to automate certain tasks and make businesses more efficient, it also raises concerns about the impact on employment. Some experts predict that AI could replace certain jobs or make them obsolete, leading to job losses and a need for employees to adapt and learn new skills. To mitigate the negative impacts of AI on employment, it is important for businesses to invest in employee training and upskilling. This could involve providing training on how to use new AI technologies, as well as helping employees to develop new skills that will be in demand in the future. It is also important for businesses to be transparent about their plans for AI adoption and to involve employees in the decision-making process so that they feel included and empowered to adapt to new technologies. Another challenge that businesses will need to consider is the ethical use of AI. As AI becomes more integrated into business operations, it is important to ensure that it is being used in a responsible and transparent manner. This could involve establishing clear policies on the use of AI, as well as considering the potential impacts on stakeholders, such as employees, customers, and the wider community. However, as we have seen, the adoption of AI also presents a number of challenges that businesses will need to consider. From job displacement to ethical concerns, there are a number of issues that businesses will need to address as they adopt AI. Despite these challenges, I remain optimistic about the future of AI in business. By staying informed and finding ways to effectively integrate AI into their operations, businesses can harness the power of this technology to create a brighter future for all stakeholders. So as we wrap up our discussion, I encourage you to stay curious and keep learning about the exciting world of artificial intelligence in business. Thank you for joining me on this journey, and I hope that you have a better understanding So I'll uh, conclude here. Uh, thank you, all the participants, all the organizers present here. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. It was quite enlightening to hear from you. So if the screen is uh, visible to you, then, uh, sir, I think there is a relevant question. Uh, if you can see, Mr. Dhrubojyoti Roy has put up a question in the screen. So if it is visible to you, can you please uh, uh, let us know about what your take on this? Uh, if it is not visible, then I will spell it out for you. Yes, yeah, some questions I can uh, read from the uh, comment box. <clears throat> Thank you. 
ওয়ান কোয়েশ্চেন কৃত্রিম বুদ্ধিমত্তার উপর নির্ভরশীল আজকের শিক্ষা প্রযুক্তি আজকের এই অনিশ্চিতে লাভবান হচ্ছে হুম Yes, uh, Toyota is in the first position. Hmm. Voice over IP, yes, Jeff Hunt. Dr. Jeffrey Hinton, known as the godfather of AI, has uh, resigned from Google over concerns about the potential for AI to pose an existential risk of humanity, flood, uh, flood of misinformation, an impact on job. Yes, Rubajuti, uh, that is correct. Let me tell you one thing. The person who has actually uh, invented mobile phone, Martin Cooper, recently in one interview I have seen him, he was actually uh, uh, giving a very wrong remark on the invention of uh, mobile phone that uh, he was telling like that, ki, uh, if I would have any idea that people will be so uh, much of addicted to this mobile phone, I could, would not have that invention in my mind. So if the inventor is telling like that, ki, uh, my invention has actually ruined the humanity, civilization, people are addicted, uh, especially in the last uh, two, three years during the lockdown period, we have actually seen school students, they are busy with all, uh, busy with the mobile phones, devices, uh, tablet PCs, uh, computer, they are everything, man, study, uh, everything is actually based on computer and uh, device based learning. So that actually, uh, the Corona period lockdown actually made people very much uh, addicted to uh, such thing. Uh, the use of the social networking actually increased a lot during this period. And because of that, uh, Martin Cooper actually uh, has uh, put forward this uh, or commented on uh, his invention. So similarly, Jeffrey Hinton, the godfather of AI, yes, uh, he has resigned from there, uh, from Google, because of uh, this kind of controversy maybe, uh, the people who are senior people, they always think that, uh, if, yes, this kind of technology can actually ruin the uh, human civilization, humanity, people will not uh, work, people will be lazy, and most, uh, uh, when chat GPT has come, many people were uh, putting comment, uh, techno, very many, a lot of technocrats actually, they are putting comments that uh, many people will lose jobs due to chat GPT. But, in reality, it is not like that, Rubajuti. Because you see, uh, when computers uh, uh, introduced uh, in the 80s decade, 90s decade, during that time, um, uh, different trade union uh, uh, organization actually, they have uh, uh, called on strikes and all those things uh, to stop the usage of uh, or implementation of uh, computerization in the offices. But actually computerization uh, uh, has not uh, decreased the job, but uh, it has increased the job. If you see that, man, each and every technology, I will not say all the technologies are very good. Some technologies are actually good. Some of them are having some bad side also. But uh, technology, actually the designer, the people who design it, the researcher who research it, their intention is not actually bad. They are in doing the invention based on a uh, good faith, good uh, objective, good aim. But people actually uh, misuse it. Uh, the, the nature of the people is actually not good. We actually, whenever we get something, we actually try to exploit it in some other way. So that's why uh, technologies uh, are having bad side. Now, suppose the internet, use of internet increase the cyber crime. But the people who are involved in the um, invention or in innovation of the internet, actually, they have never thought of such thing. Uh, okay, uh, there will be cyber crime, people will uh, 
snatch the people will steal the privacy data security will be a problem uh, so this kind of things were not thought of but people actually they make it actually uh, critical uh, they do in the reverse way that's why this kind of problems are there i hope drubajiti uh, your answer you were uh, you have got your answer one question is there uh, ai and chat gpt are concerning as regard to mimicking uh, facial features nlp algorithm mimicking voice these are really worrisome yes definitely we have seen that video i have shown even the person who is behind chat gpt elon musk elon musk is also saying that yes uh, technology this kind of technology will have very bad impact in the society if uh, uh, if you can recall the incident when uh, dolly the cloning uh, animal first cloned animal the sheep uh, uh, actually it was uh, i think in the 90s decade or early, uh, yes nine, so early uh, 2000 or during that time i forgot the exact year but at that time when a lot of discussions were there in the scientific community even in newspaper news channels uh, people were uh, talking about this kind of thing if uh, people are getting the cloning technology uh, the uh, there will be many uh, bad impact in the society and in fact uh, uh, when uh, laden is actually uh, uh, died at that time people were talking ki, and that was the clone of the laden but not original laden so many uh, discussions were there like that so yes um, this kind of technologies are actually um, having some uh, societal issues uh, human civilization related issues mm, in what ways we can use chat gpt in business yes i have discussed that jeffron i think uh, you have seen the uh, last three slides where i have discussed how chat gpt can be used in business mainly for drafting uh, text based uh, uh, thing chat gpt can be used for making draft making letters making emails suppose i have one email to send to uh, 10 different uh, business related people so chat gpt can uh, take the or instruction from me and can make the uh, make the draft of the email and can send the emails to those email addresses so this kind of work can be done through chat gpt now uh roni dasgupta you have uh, questioned uh, hong kong cnn as many as 300 million full-time jobs around the world could be automated in some way by the newest wave of artificial intelligence especially chat gpt according to goldman yes yes uh full-time uh, 300 million jobs will be there uh, yes uh, tech, new technology will never uh, lose money uh, never uh, there will be no uh, jobless people due to this kind of technology uh, but there will be new job created uh, creation new job creation in the market so that pe new people will be engaged for uh, this kind of industries which will come through uh, ai related uh, tools and ai related systems uh, <clears throat> I'm Ronik G. Uh, yes, sir. Thanks for your view. And the session was really uh, okay. Any other question? Who invented the atom? Oh, yes, Rob Oppenheimer also. Yes, Kostov. Very much correct. The inventor, inventor actually uh, sometimes they regret for this kind of uh, thing. Okay, um, yes, why I have created such a deadly thing. So uh, I think uh, no more questions from your side. Uh, Dr. Deepak, sir. As we have just told, um, that is use of Alexa. Uh, it is yes, not the technology, but the users are actually messing the use yes so yes the alexa as we have told that it is uh, actually instructing we are instructing to alexa and it is actually operating that is free regarding your ac and all but hmm. indeed uh, 
in our country it is not in so much use other than the developed sta uh, states but in western countries where the alexa uh, the producer country that is alexa is being widely used by the children only and it is yeah, and it has been proved that it is detrimental to the family's health of the system yes. of the family so any comment on this basically children are using this yes yes actually technology uh, has i mean uh, in any age group even uh, ch uh, children if they are using even middle age people old age people technologies are actually developed for all i uh, mean thinking of all the age group people uh, they are uh, so children actually they are uh, more depending on this kind of technologies because uh, new technology when it is coming they are taking it so seriously but the old people they have no time to uh, listen understand the technologies suppose many new technologies are coming we never uh, focus on the that we, we have less interest on such technologies but new generation they have so much interest ki suppose alexa type uh, robot is, is there uh, so they are using it even in my oh my uh, children they are using the google assistant for uh, all the searching but i generally type uh, the keyword in the google search before searching anything i am not using that boys uh, yeah searching tool so uh, there is no harm actually if uh, uh, young age people children they are using this kind of technologies uh, there is no harm but only the thing is that there must be some supervision from the um, elderly people who are present in the home in the family uh, that uh, there what type of things they are doing there should be uh, some audit or some uh, accountability should be there otherwise uh, children they will have no idea from where they will go at which level when uh, the when at any level they can go and there can be uh, some uh, negative thing uh, so this kind of things to be uh, supervised from the uh, family side otherwise there is no harm children can use it uh, new technologies can be used no harm yes sir okay thank you thank you madam any other question uh, dipraj babu uh, sir uh, if there is any other question you can uh, write it in the comment the participants okay sir it was quite enlightening uh, we are actually not oblivious of the fact that you have to manage a busy schedule so uh, uh, thanks for giving us the time it was quite valuable for us so now for the official uh, now for the official vote of thanks i would like uh, mrs monisha goswami uh, assistant professor department of business administration gc college uh, to deliver a uh, formal vote of thanks thank you diprat sir thank you diprat sir with this eloquent lucid and free flowing deliberation from our guest speaker dr pradeepta das sir associate professor department of computer science assam university we have come to an end of today's lecture session on artificial intelligence and data science for industry 4.0 as a customary uh, i would like to offer a vote of thanks from the entire department first of all i offer the department offers a vote of thanks to principal sir dr bibharsh dev and vice principal madam dr gopal sinha ma'am for giving us an approval to conduct a national webinar on artificial intelligence and data science for industry 4.0 both sir and madam are always very happy to hear every department doing something each and every day and they are more enthusiastic about the topic as today happens to be a national uh, technology day next i would like to offer vote of thanks to our iqsc coordinator dr opratim nag sir for collaborating uh, the coordinating the program with iqsc and for being a part of this webinar joining for joining the webinar with us now i am thankful to the coordinator of this department dr sharvani datta dev madam who, who is a coordinator as well as the convener of the today's program 
she is the heart and soul of the entire department and the decision to hold a webinar series is her brand child we are equally thankful to the head of the department mr deepraj purakasta sir who happens to be a silent guardian of the department and all the faculty members of this department namely dr deepraj chakravarti sir joydeep purakasta and <coughs> fatima madam for giving us technical support and scheduling the program over a period of time i am again thankful to our resource person sir now uh, for um, for his valuable time for giving us his valuable time and uh, taking pain in conducting uh, uh, this webinar now i am thankful to all the participants who have attended this program in this hot and humid weather today and i am happy to let you know that amongst not only have students but we also have amongst us many faculty members who have joined this session and made this program a successful one apart from all this i am thankful to all teaching and non teaching staff of gc college for helping us in conducting this program and making this webinar a successful thank you very much sir and thanks to one and all for this i am also thankful to india post government of india for as they have they have also joined this program and made us uh, and we are thankful for and we are thankful for, to uh, to them too thank you very much thank you one and all namaskar now i would uh, like uh, to request coordinator department of business administration uh, dr sharbani dutto madam who also happens to be uh, the uh, convener of this program to officially declare the program to be closed madam please okay deepraj uh, the webinar is very well closed okay thank you sir for joining us and helping okay, us to conduct madam. this webinar Thank you.